Is there a set of rules for creating emotions in music? Can you just use science and follow a formula? Well, yes and no. So this is an interesting question, but before we get to how music theory concepts can make emotions, in order to understand how, we first have to go back to the sciencey bit. So music is just sound, and sound is just waves, which we measure in hertz. Hertz means how many vibrations per second. So a very common note to demonstrate this is a note called A440. And on the piano, this is the A that's a few notes above middle C. So at concert pitch, this A is 440 hertz, which means 440 vibrations per second. And that vibration is what produces the note A. If you play something like a guitar, you can actually see it vibrating. The faster the vibration, the higher pitched the notes are. So that's how sound works, but why do we care? What has that got to do with making music? And why do we want to know how fast the waves are vibrating? Well, when making music, we don't really. All we really care about is two concepts, and these are called consonance and dissonance. Consonance is notes that sound good together, and dissonance is notes that clash or rub against each other. So the ultimate consonance is unison, which is two notes that are exactly the same. For example, if someone was to sing an A at 440 hertz, and another person sang an A at 440 hertz. This is as consonant as it gets. It's two people singing the exact same note and the vibrations are at the exact same frequency, 440 times per second. The second best consonance is octaves. Octaves are notes that have the same letter name, but just in a different place. So on a piano, you would play an A, and the note an octave higher would be another A. The reason that these work so well is because A is 440 hertz, and the A one octave higher is 880 hertz, which is double the frequency. If you were to play an A one octave higher than that, then that would be 1760 hertz, which once again is double the last A. So what you hear is frequencies that gel really well together when you play them at the same time, and that makes them consonant. The next best note is a fifth. So from A, this would be the fifth note above that, which is A, B, C, D, E, so that's an E. The reason this works so well is because it is just three times the original A. So from A440 to A880, A, you have an E at 1320 hertz. Maths. Well, technically it's 1319 hertz, but it's close, no one's counting. So this note also has a resonance relationship to that original A. After that, the next best note is a fourth, because four times 440 makes 1760, which is a fourth above that E we've just had. And it happens to be that third octave A that we worked out originally, which is at 1760 hertz. That's a lot of science, but we are getting to the good bit. A fourth is also the same as a fifth, but backwards. So on a piano, if you play an E, four notes above that E is an A. However, if you play an A, five notes above that A is an E. So E is four notes below A and five notes above it which is why fourths and fifths are consonant. This can go on and on, working out the notes that have the closest relationship based on multiples of the original note. However, there is a name for this, and this is called the harmonic series. But once again, why do we care? How is this going to help us create a formula for emotions in music? Well, when you play any note, you're actually hearing lots of notes. You hear the note you've actually played, but that note also produces lots of other notes called overtones. These overtones can be heard and they are in a certain order. The first is an octave above, then a fifth above, then a fourth above that, and so on. This is why these relationships between the notes are so important when hearing notes. Because there are certain notes that are consonant and work well together, like fourths and fifths and octaves, and there are certain notes that are less consonant, like thirds and sixths, which is three notes above A and six notes above A, then there are notes that are really dissonant, like an A to an A sharp, for example. And this is because their frequencies don't gel well at all and they clash a lot. So now that we know that certain notes work well together and certain notes don't work so well together, you can use these to create emotions in a piece of music. In real life, negative emotions tend to be based on conflict and something that feels unresolved. For example, if you have just been through a breakup, then that is based on conflict and unresolved feelings. If you stub your toe, then that is also based on unresolved pain. If you are frustrated or angry or anything negative really, you feel a sense of unresolved conflict. So in music, these types of emotions can be represented by using more dissonant note relationships. Because these notes inherently have more conflict. 
whereas positive emotions feel more settled and can be represented using notes that feel more settled together, such as fourths, fifths, octaves, because these feel strong and comfortable. If you are getting value from this video, be sure to like and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thanks. There is also a small matter of something called major and minor. With the weaker relationships like seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths, you can lean one of two ways, the major way or the minor way. Minor is the negative emotion, so that is one down, and major is positive, so that's the higher of the two notes. So if we take a third and play a major third, it sounds happy. And if we take a minor third, that sounds darker or more sad. This is by no means a complete guide to how notes work together. Although the concept of different types of chords and scales is definitely a rabbit hole that I would recommend going down, because it will give you so many more tools to create the exact effects that you are looking for. However, the idea of consonance and dissonance is where all chords and scales stem from. And note relationships are just one aspect to how music theory can help you work out or create more meaningful and emotive music. Another tool is pitch. If you play higher notes, everything sounds more distant because the notes are technically further away from each other. And by this, I mean in terms of vibrations per second. If you remember that each octave doubles in frequency, A440, A880, A1760, this means that the higher up you are in pitch, the bigger the distance between all of the notes. So when you play higher up, there is a feeling of space and emptiness where really low notes sound muddy and clustered. You can use this to your advantage to create all kinds of emotions, like the feeling of wonder might require more space, or something like the feeling of loss or emptiness. On the opposite side, to create feelings like anger or triumph, you might want notes that sound more close together and dense. So you could choose notes that are lower down on the piano to do that. Another tool you can use is dynamics. In music, dynamics just refers to the volume or the fullness of the sound. And once again, if we try and look at the link between real life and music, not that music isn't real life, anger and frustration is more sudden and agitated. So you might want to use the louder dynamics. Whereas in contrast, being sleepy or seeing beauty might be more delicate and soft. While we narrow down emotions and feelings to an objective science, ultimately these are just tools that give you the opportunity to experiment and find meaning in music for yourself. So can you just use science and follow a formula to create emotions in music? Well, yes, because we can represent feelings in music using knowledge and music theory. And this is really valuable, but also, no, because music is a personal experience and music theory knowledge is just a tool for your creativity. Another tool for your creativity is learning how to sight read on the piano. And if you struggle with sight reading, you might want to check out this video. So head on through and I will see you there.